This video is titled Birth Pangs and the Imminent Rapture. If you go back to 1111, January 1st, 2011, you'll see how beginning with the dead birds falling out of the sky in Arkansas, all the black birds, tens of thousands of them, all the way throughout the entire year, you just saw, constantly saw things like this. You saw birds falling out of the air all over the divided states of Senerica, or formerly the United States of America, and all over the world. You saw flocks and flocks and flocks of birds falling out of the sky. And the really strange thing is you only saw one species of bird. You didn't see 9,999 blackbirds and one sparrow. You didn't see 8,000 and nine geese and one in one pigeon you didn't see that kind of stuff you saw every single bird that fell in each flock around the entire globe you know dozens and dozens of times it was always the same species and to me this is god's way of showing you guys can't write this off you can't speak it off you can't say that it was you know some kind of um anomaly or some kind of a migratory pattern or some kind of a fireworks thing or some kind of a scare thing whatever no it's a hundred percent proof it's from god is who's who's behind all of this and then look at all of the fish that started turning up dead on the banks of the rivers and in the oceans and the harbors and the bays look at all of the sea creatures the crabs the octopus the whales the sharks the just all kinds of different species that would turn up and once again it was always without fail the exact same species. Now, what's the odds of going to a river and finding, you know, tons and tons of dead fish wash up and they're all the exact same species? In a river, you've got hundreds of species of fish. In an ocean, you've got thousands of species. You're going to at least find one of a different kind. But how many times did it find more than one of a different kind? Zero. Exactly. And again, that's God's way of showing, no, don't explain this away. This is me. God's doing this, period. You'd have whole herds of cattle, of pigs, of other domestic animals dying. This just happened over and over and over and over again, fulfilling biblical prophecy. This was prophesied thousands of years ago that this would happen. Google it. Google all the animal deaths in the Bible. See what you come up with. They'll show you the scripture. Then we start seeing all of the different weather type related things extreme cold extreme heat fires all over this country just drought everywhere record cold record snow record tornadoes record deaths everywhere huge hurricanes and all around the world you would see earthquakes volcanoes typhoons flooding tsunamis happen over and over and over and over and over again all the time it kept increasing with time Increasing in intensity. God was trying to show the world, okay, you didn't listen to me when I showed you the dead fish and animals and birds. Now let's try the weather. But man still tried to say, oh, it, the, oh, that was uh, La Nina. That was El Nino. That was just a, some kind of a rogue weather pattern. No, that's garbage. It was God's hand that was doing it. Okay, so God says you didn't believe me on the animals and birds and fish or the weather. So let's go ahead and try your financial system. So God started crashing currency. He started crashing banks. He started crashing the housing market even more than it was going back to 08. He started crashing everything financial around the world. And people said, oh, it's just a cyclical, a cyclical thing. You know, it's this cycle or it was bad investment advice or it was bad management. It was a bad whatever. And again, it's garbage. You know, God showed this. And again, this reminds me of the Egyptians exactly. Exactly. When, when Moses went to Pharaoh and kept showing him over and over and over and over again proof that there was God behind this, he just kept denying it. And we're the same way here in Sinerica and the rest of the world. So God said, okay, so you didn't go with the, with the animals and the fish and the birds. You know, you didn't go, you didn't believe me on the, the weather patterns or on the money. Let's start having all kinds of lawlessness and, 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 and wickedness. And let's start having all kinds of war and rumors of war. You had the whole Middle East going in a huge uproar with, with, with overthrow and violence and chaos and anarchy. All kinds of terrorist threats, terrorist attacks all around the world, lawlessness all over this country, man. 
people are murdering families and then shooting themselves in the head. People going out and just murdering just randomly and, and, and committing suicide and, 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 and rapes and all kinds of other crazy stuff just increasing like mad. And again, you know, human beings are so stupid, they just went ahead and just denied it again. So then you go ahead and fast forward to 2012, what happens? What happens on the exact same thing right on New Year's Eve before the clock struck midnight, Little Rock, Arkansas, tens of thousands of blackbirds falling dead from the sky. The exact same day, same city, same bird, same numbers. And this time, check this out. I read in the, in the uh, online news that the fire department had banned fireworks. Remembering what happened last year, saying, no, 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 we can't have fireworks. It's going to cause the birds to die. So they can't even use that excuse. Okay, And then you go a couple days later, <laughs> you've got tons and tons of dead fish washing up on the shore again. Okay, But this time, God took it one step further. He made all those fish disappear overnight, which is impossible. I almost went to be a marine biologist, and I am a person that has studied the ocean, ocean life my entire life. I grew up on the ocean. It's physically impossible for tons and tons of fish to wash back in the tide overnight, which is what science excuse was. God did it so there could be no doubt who it was. But again, where are we at? The same old garbage. We don't listen, we don't believe. And the earthquakes and the volcanoes. Volcanic activity is crazy this year already. All, seven volcanoes in, in, in Indonesia getting ready to blow up. All over the world, volcanoes everywhere. Big, huge earthquakes everywhere. The same messes we're in, financial war, rumors of war. The Middle East is, is getting ready to blow up. Israel's getting ready to fight. The rapture's getting ready to happen. People still won't listen. They don't care. 2011, the year of chaos and disorder. 2012, I believe this will be the year of restoration and order. The number 11... And the Bible is chaos and disorder. Number 12 is the restoration of order and bringing it all back in. And there's not going to be another 11 or 12 for another 100 years, my friends. And the rapture's not 100 years away. It's now. It's coming any second of any day now. God's showing us. He's, get, he's got his watchman trying to warn everybody. He's showing us scripture. He's showing us things in the world. But people don't listen. They don't care. November, late November of 2010, I was interceding for this filthy country, for this cesspool of Senerica. And apologizing for all the babies that are murdered because I read a story about babies being thrown in dumpsters. And the Holy Spirit said, time out, Paul, listen to me. Listen to me. And so I was, I was quiet. He began to speak in that familiar voice. He speaks to me every day, all the time. And he told me, he said, God is tired of your country. He's tired of, of, of United States. You turn your back on him for the last time. You have turned your back on Israel for the last time. You've murdered 50s of millions of, of innocent babies that are known, maybe twice that many unknown. Your filthy perversion of homosexuality and its offshoots are everywhere. You're one of the porno capitals of the world. You're one of the child molestation and sex industry for children of the capitals of the world. You're just a filthy, perverted place. You've made the church into the house of Satan, and God's tired of it. And the Holy Spirit said, God's getting ready to remove his hand of protection and replace it with his hand of judgment. You tell everybody you can, you can find it's going to happen soon, imminently. And so I said, like I always do, Holy Spirit, I'm going to do it. And I did. Six weeks later, 1-1-11 comes and boom. And look how we've been since 1-1-11. You know, the Word of God never returns empty. If He tells us something, and we tell somebody else, and we do what we're supposed to do and believe it, it's going to happen. God's going to get His message out regardless. He wants people to be messengers, to listen to what He says, and not to be afraid to stand up and tell the truth, and, don't, and not to care if people call you a liar or call you a kook or call you a nut job. It doesn't matter. As long as you're doing God's will, what the Holy Spirit tells you, man can call you anything he wants to call you. As long as Jesus Christ calls me his son, his child, and someone he's proud of, that's all that i got to hear. That's all i got to know. I'm going to do his will. So anyways, here we are, already almost mid-January of 2012. War in the Middle East with Israel is imminent. Senerica is even going to help her now. All of her neighbors have turned against her. They've teamed up. They've got all kinds of weapons being shipped into the borders. It's here, my friends. The rapture is going to happen any second of any day now. Are you ready to be raptured? I mean, really ready. I don't mean the way the world tells you nowadays of, oh, just go ahead and get saved and then, you know, live your life however you want to. And if you're gay or lesbian or, you know, if you, if you rape women or... 
if you kill people or you know if you lie cheat and steal all the time or even if you decide after you're a Christian for 20 30 years if you decide to worship Satan it's okay God's gonna take you into heaven what a bunch of baloney that just makes me sick it makes me physically ill it makes me want to vomit when I hear this kind of stuff I get filled with righteous anger and holy discontent and I'm sick of hearing this I'm sick of hearing the Joseph Prince and all the false prophet lies Joel Olstein all these televangelists, all of the regular preachers and evangelists. I'm tired of hearing the watered-down, soft-soaked Word of God. It's baloney. The Word of God was written one way by the hand of God. There is there's absolutely no ambiguity. There is no way to misinterpret. It's plain and simple. If you read the Word of God through the Holy Spirit's eyes, who lives in your heart, if, you, as, if you're a Christian, no way you can get it wrong. So stop, stop the cheap grace. Stop the living easy trying to get to heaven by doing little of nothing. Stop all this stuff and start and just get right with Jesus Christ now, my friends. Because if you don't, you're going to pay the ultimate price. First of all, you'll be stuck here for seven years of hell on earth. And there's no guarantee that you'll even survive the initial onslaught of all the accidents and all of the, the looting and murder and rape and everything. You could be killed then. If you're not saved, guess what? You're going straight to hell. That's it. If, you, if you've been saved before and you've got all kinds of unconfessed sin in your life that you know about and... You haven't repented, you're not going to go to heaven. I don't care what any of these liars tell you. You're not going to heaven. Read your Bible. Open it. There's hundreds of scripture that prove this. Take the blinders off. Pray that the scales would fall off your eyes. And get right with God now, my friends. The time is almost over. There's no time to play Christian anymore. It's time to get serious. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I pray that eyes would be opened as I prayed, as I spoke a few minutes ago. The scales would fall off of eyes, blinders would fall off, people would see the truth, they'd come to know you as Lord and Savior if they're not saved, and for all of the, the billions that might be saved, might be a couple billion in this world, that they would just turn and repent from all the lies and the false prophecies and the false doctrines and, and, and run away from the false prophets and the liars and the false shepherds and the wolves in sheep's clothing who lead them, all their gurus and all their gods with the little G that they worship and follow. And just shake that off. Come right back to their first love, Jesus Christ, and say, Hey, I know I've messed up. I'm going to start reading the Bible the right way. I'm going to repent of my sins and iniquities. I'm going to get out of my backslidden state and turn back to Jesus now. I just pray this would happen soon, Jesus, because I know. No one knows the day and the hour but your Father. But we know the time is imminent. Any time now, any second now, you can return. Please help people to get real. Please help them to get right and to understand you do not want to be in the tribulation. You want to get things right right now. See the signs, read the Bible, and get it right. In the name of Jesus, I ask it. Amen. And as always, my friends, if you're watching this video and you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, pray this with me. Say, Jesus, I'm sorry. I know that I've done wrong. I know that I've sinned in my life. I've done things that are bad and that are against your holy will. I believe you came to earth. I believe you died on the cross for my sins. I believe you were risen again on the third day went back to heaven to the right-hand side of the Father, and since then you've been preparing a place in heaven for eternity for all Christians. I pray that you would forgive me of my sins, cleanse my heart, wash my heart clean, make me whole, make me a new creature in Christ, a child of the King, come to live inside my heart. In Jesus' name I ask it, amen. If you pray this prayer, my friends, God says that he will answer every single person that asks him to be their Lord and Savior. All who come to me will be saved. If you're not really sure or comfortable, send me an inbox. Send me a private message. I'd love to pray this with you. You can give me a phone call. I'll call you. I do it all the time on Facebook. I'd love to pray with you for salvation. If you happen to have a family member or friend or anyone you know who doesn't know Jesus as Lord and Savior and you'd like me to pray for them, if you are sick, have a sick family member or friend, if you need a job, a car, a home, if you don't have food, clothing, water, if you have a sick pet, it doesn't matter what it is, I'd love to pray with you. When I pray, I pray believing in my heart, speaking with my mouth, knowing that God will answer that prayer. The Holy Bible says it. Test God. He'll prove you. If you believe that and do it that way, He will answer the prayer. Just test Him. He's always true. His word never returns empty. As always, I thank you so much for listening, for taking time. Please share this video with everyone you can. Get the word out. And just witness with all the time you have left. Jesus is coming back very, very soon. I love you guys. And I pray that God will bless you.